This is fun. And if you messed up, ah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Welcome to Petrovce. We are deep in the heart of the Sabinia Valley in Slovenia, the Valley of Hops. Slovenia is the sixth, maybe fifth, don't know how much has changed, um, largest producer of hops in the world. That is more than countries like New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, they export 90 to 95% of their hops, but some of them stay here and they are on in the beers on display right now. We are at Clef Brewery, which is an amazing and adorable little brewery. We've been shown around by Mateusz, the head brewer, and his father, Jure, who's the director of the business, and they've been very, very kind, very hospitable. So I don't know if you know, but we have music story. Do you hear about it? No, um, tell us about so it. So Clef means, I have a bad shirt, but Clef means like the, the music key. Yeah, yeah. yeah? So we collaborate with the famous swing and bands. So we have seven beers, which is like common every day on tap, and we have special ones. Yeah. And today is um, our big seller, which is Tabu. It's a local band, big okay. band from Slovenia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we these these two beers are the more selling ones and more obliged ones. So Tabu is Kolsch. Yeah. And that's it. So that's why we're brewing today. And I can see why Kolsch should be popular in yeah. somewhere like, especially we, during the summer. During the summer and concerts, because they're playing the music and yeah. we have, to have our beer. And so that means you can it. actually drink good beer at a concert, which in yeah. England and New Zealand, you don't get good beer at a concert. You maybe, get rubbish beer. <laughs> maybe you don't go to the right concert. <laughs> That's probably the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so what goes into your Kolsch? Do you use hops from this valley? Yeah, of course. Yeah. We must because the, the, the Tabu is also lock and belt. They started five minutes walking from here, not driving because Slovenia yeah. is, you know, small. small. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually walking distance, yeah, yeah, not yeah. the car distance. So five minutes from here, they started the band. So we pick up the hops right here when you Beautiful. Yeah. 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 But you're from New Zealand. You have hops there too. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, we yeah. do this. Sort I don't of thing, know that, that close. We got that not, not quite that close. <laughs> not quite that close, but yeah. We have pretty close. So we use Aurora and Sinisky Golding. They have laid on a quite large selection of beers for us Amazing. to speedily talk you through. <laughs> I'm going to start with a range they do, which they describe as heavily fruited sours. Now, whether these border on smoothie sours or not, I'm not quite sure. They don't have any lactose in, but they do have an incredible amount of fruit. So four of these beers are that style we've got mm. a strawberry one we've got a cherry and stone fruit one we have a banana one and then we've got a pina colada one which is obviously going to be pineapple and coconut what have you started there with so this is the strawberry one and 100 percent, it's like you are walking down in summer it's just absolutely sun ripened strawberries on the nose brilliant you got that nice bit of tang at the end on the tongue and just this is summer as a beer 100 percent, give it a whirl we've seen strawberries quite big in this area of the world yeah. actually and we are yeah. in strawberry season absolutely yeah. we yeah. are yep for me as a kiwi this oh, is nice. this is this is christmas <laughs> strawberries is christmas strawberries which, is christmas. Yep, which doesn't make europeans sense. are all going <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but this is just summer it's fruity it's got a little bit of actual sedimenty fruit in the bottom of the glass it's real fruit right here. It's not overly sour, but it does have a clean finish. So it hits you all up with that sweet strawberry straight yeah. away. Yeah. It does finish relatively clean. I don't think the next couple are going to finish quite so clean. I think they're going to be absolute fruit bombs. Fruit bomb is definitely correct. I mean, yeah, you do get that. In, so this is the stone fruit plum. It is that nice sort of plum fullness of it as well. The color is obviously a little bit darker that you get from some of these stone fruits as well it's a lot more full less sweet for sure um and actually not quite as tart at all i'd say that is slightly more well-rounded than the strawberry one actually yeah. it does have a slight complexity of flavor about it but we <laughs> have not got time to lose we're straight onto the banana one but okay first of all banana and sours like that i'm just gonna do a quick yeah, bananas and sours in the first place is a very interesting concept. How many C's are on that thick for you? 
four, four C's. C's. So it's a four C rating on the thick boy. Usually you would associate bananas with that sort of creamy, but but to have, you do get that creaminess, but then you also get that lovely sort of tang without being off, if you know what I mean. It, yeah, I think it's very well balanced. It's a very interesting concept, and I think they've done it bloody well. I know I've already said thick, but the mouthfeel is incredibly thick. Mm. Like, even for one of these heavily fruit sours, that is very full. Yeah. Viscous. Vis- vis- I love the word viscous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the execution of this, brilliant. Next up, piña colada. Now, I know you were talking thick with, well, I said four Cs. How many Cs is this on the thick? This variety? has got to be double the amount of Cs. Eight Cs. I mean, just... <sighs> When it was poured, I was like, is that all fun? No. No, it's just that chunky. There's many there's many beers nowadays where you go, is that even a beer? I'm questioning, is that even a beer? I mean, you, there's a lot of coconut going on in there. There's a we lot. are certainly pushing, really pushing the boundaries of what beer is at that point. That is... It's a pina colada. We're going to clean our palate up a little bit mm-hmm. now. Well, Jay. So we've got a blonde ale, which was actually described by Yore as if you want to clean your palate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is absolute just grass, hay kind of aroma mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly refreshing. That Give is. It a whirl how you want your blonde ale if you've been working a hard day in the fields, the fields of hops. I get the grassiness, mm. for sure. Yeah, sometimes I find blonde ales can be a little bit on the sweeter side. The Belgian blondes, yeah, yeah Belgian with their blondes, funky esters definitely. and that sort of thing. We certainly haven't gone down that route mm. with this. No, that is fantastic. That's, yeah, still lovely and clean on the end, but, yeah, a little bit of sweetness in the middle, but just... Yeah, brilliant. And next up on the palate cleansers, we have a cold IPA. Now, so. for those who may not have heard of cold IPA yet, there are many different ways of making it, but effectively it is a beer that has all the flavour and hoppiness and bitterness of an IPA with the clean, easy drinking finish of a lager. Mm. How you go about that from the brewing process, i say there are a couple, a couple of different, different. ways. Um How's this one gone down? I mean, clarity of the beer, fantastic. As we said about some of the hops in this area, you get that lovely citrus, lemon, lime characteristics as well. I'm definitely feeling that straight off the like off the beginning, um, and yeah, finishes lovely and easy. A little bit of grass in the middle. Very well done. I think this is. I mean, it's, it smells straight up IBUs. Mm. They're like proper kind of West Coast bitterness about yep. it. I think it's hanging about 6% as well, which is, which is good. Yeah, I mean, it's not often I found a cold IPA that actually delivers on its description, but that is all up yeah. from flavour, but a nice, yeah, crisp finish to it. Mm. It makes me want to go back for another sip, so that's <laughs> so, it's clearly doing so its job. So you shall. <laughs> How's your palate, then, Alana? Cleansed? Ready for Let's some... Let's make it dirty uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> We're on to the dark beers. What are you so starting with? We've got a couple of stouts and we've got a couple of pastry stouts. We're going to start with the straight stout, which is in your right hand there, my darlings. This is just the easygoing, I say easygoing, I believe about 6% straight stout. Lovely, roasty, not too much chocolate actually. And we're going to f with it anytime soon. Yeah, super bitter, super left your long black to go cold had a sip that's good <laughs> yeah. <Look at> that. <laughs> i mean that's that's what it tastes like it's quite it doesn't quite have that big boisterous finish as you'd sometimes assume from some of these types of beers um but yeah if you want a bit of oomph want a bit of punch but still want to maybe have a couple yeah delivers entirely I mean, the smell, the smell's big, isn't yeah. it? It's proper yeah. roasting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like all up front and then it just sort of... Is that the technical term? Yeah, it is. I see what you mean, though. Actually, for all that kind of aroma and initial yeah. mouth punch, very clean, very easy drinking. 
don't punch my mouth. <laughs> Next up, I promised we'd mess with the stout. We have, I mean, I say we, Clef have the amazing Clef Brewery. This is barrel aged in rum barrels for a year. So simply the stout we were drinking before, but with rum for a year. I mean, honestly, just smelling this and it makes your knees go weak. Oh, just, it's... I say. Oh, uh, it's... There's, there's no question what barrel this went in. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing. I, I could just sit and sniff this all day. Make this into scented candles. They never taste as good as they look, I tell you. It tastes as good as it looks. It Ooh, smells. There we go. Are you listening, Lush? <laughs> Put that in a bath bomb. Yeah, honestly, like that is just rum vanilla christ that just smells like rum doesn't it, it? well it does just, it does i'd like to have some complex tasting notes right now but i'm just <laughs> going to say rum it smells no, like rum you do get that lovely little bit of sort of french vanilla-esque in there as well yeah that really a bit of coconut as well actually as well yeah 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 brilliant oh that is yeah, that's big and sweet on mm. the start. And it does have that kind of residual ethanol finish that I kind yeah. of like about a barrel aged beer. It's yeah. like, it, it's not f***ing around. It's mm. like, oh, no, I've happened. It's bashing about 9.3 as well. So, like, on the big boy scale, it's not massive boy, mm, but, yeah. yeah. That's sessionable. It's yeah. Like session rum. <laughs> this, is, this is a session rum. However, now we're going to get really silly. So we're on to the pastry stouts. And what I really enjoy about these guys is they have themed their pastry stouts yeah. to a certain extent. So we're going to start with one, which is Potitsa. Now, this is an authentic Slovenian dessert that they have then tried to condense and boil down into a beer. So the main characteristics of Potitsa is cinnamon and walnut. It is also kind of your like fruit cakey vibes. There's a lot mm. of raisins and dried fruits mm. and that sort of thing in there. But they're the key flavors to pick out. Mm. What do we reckon to this? Um, I mean, so I think they said this was an, uh, an Easter celebration beer. Yes, as well. apparently they mostly make this dessert for Easter. So, uh, but they, they will come back to it for Christmas and that sort of thing. So it's kind of like Christmas mm. pudding y sort yeah. of thing. So, flavor wise as well. You know, some of these pastry shots can just be absolutely overwhelmingly sweet. I think it's sort of that walnut characteristic as well that kind of dries it out a little bit. And I don't want to say balances it a little bit, but balances it a little bit. A balanced pastry <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. next. Yeah, yeah, you get that lovely sort of cinnamon-esque as well. But I'm yeah. getting a lot of cinnamon on the yeah. nose, a bit of clove. Yeah. Mouthfeel, very thick, boy. Very thick. I mean, it, 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 it's full, it's, it's got that little bit of viscosity, but it isn't quite pina colada, sour level of <laughs> thickness. How many C's? <laughs> Five. Five? Five. Ooh, bigger than the banana. We need to, we need to come back to this C rating, I think. <laughs> oh, that is very, it's very Moorish, isn't it? it yeah. yeah. And last up, we have the Gibbonitsa pastry stout so this is a dessert from the area of slovenia that borders to hungary so there's a little bit of culture mash there yeah. but the main difference here is poppy seeds um, the hungarians love using poppy seeds and different <laughs> sort of things uh this is apples um raisins lots of different things this is a seven layered dessert yeah. we were told so one yeah. is preferred the seven layers and they put each of these seven layers into the mirror uh, i mean uh, for me apples is the prime on the nose just straight apple pie out the oven a little bit of cinnamon got that pastry buttery butter yes as well apples much more on the nose than it is actually through the palate it finishes with that sort of as i say crumbly pie sort of feel but yeah sorry go for it <laughs> i'm just I'm there holding on to listen to, to it. your description yeah, I'm like, like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> This is another. Oh yeah, yeah. See, that is proper apple pie, it isn't is. it? It is. Yeah, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. I wouldn't expect that kind of aroma from a beer so dark. No, yeah, which is really interesting actually, and the fact that they've smashed so much into it is just really juicy and. 
apple pie on the nose, apple crumble on the finish. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Yep. I think we're getting better. Mm. <laughs> God, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I think out of, I think out of the two pastries, this is probably my favorite just because it just I prefer this. It's uh, very that make Hungarian viewers happy. <laughs> but I think with so my pet hate is when a beer smells better than what it tastes. Mm. But I think for this one, it, it's just different. It's just different. Same time, but different. Yeah, like you've got so much on the nose, but then when you taste it, it just it starts off with that lovely apple pie cinnamon and then it just changes and warps into something beautiful and I've, I've really enjoyed that sort of journey that you get from that and yeah that that is that what is i'm stunned by overall is that we are effectively on a farm in the middle of nowhere in slovenia mm. and the quality of beers that we are tasting right now is genuinely amazing like we're not just saying this the quality has been incredible yeah. across the board yeah. And I think what I love about these guys as well is what they're saying. They've got two two separate brew houses. One of them's much, much smaller and one of them's much bigger. And so with those smaller brew houses, obviously you get a lot more room for play and get to do dumb things like a pina colada sour. And if it works, cool. If it doesn't, fair enough, you've only done a small batch. And that's what I love about craft beer is just trying things, chucking mm. different fruits into it, being like, oh, cool, I've got an idea cool give it a whirl and these guys have definitely done that like some of the flavors you know a banana sour who would even think of that let alone give it a whirl and in slovenia yeah and what they've done is amazing i love it it's great and that's that's why i appreciate about these guys is yes you've got a field full of hops behind you but i'm not just going to brew an ipa Mm. all right tell us about your tiny little play set then this is this is the fun bit of the brewery. Yeah, this is my place. If I brew, if this is the my place. Today we are brewing. Today is a lager day because the summer is coming. Hey, nothing wrong so with that. So we are brewing the Mexican lager. So this is today and the Kolsch lager, I suppose. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, this this is today and this is just this is fun. And if you messed up, ah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah.